yesterday we did permutations and here's a typical problem. We have three students, three kids, that are trying for first and second place in a diving meet. That's why I only have two blanks, because there's two places. And first place, let's go at this one. How many choices do I have for that spot? Three. And then the other, after I do that, I multiply it by how many choices I have for this spot, which is what? Two. So three times two is six. There must be six ways. All right, just to remind you so you can really relate to this, we're going to use uh, three names. Um, Kayla, La Fonda, and Van. K, L, and V. I'd like you to write out the six combos and put them like, in order so that we, you know, no one's better than the other. Like this was first place, this is second place. K and then, I don't even have a J. K and then L, so you know one's above the other. Write out your six combos. I'm just trying to make the point here so you, you can get these in the real world. Now notice I don't want sets of three. I want sets of two this time because the third place person doesn't even get a medal or whatever. So it's K, L, L, V, K, V, L, K, what's the last two? V, K, and V, L. You guys know where that name La Fonda comes from? Napoleon Dynamite, very good. Okay. All right. Let's... Uh, talk about a different way that you can compute these that's more powerful. This is also a permutation. It's the same exact problem and it is a, like, a way that you can use to compute them that can be done on a calculator and that part can be entered on a calculator if you know where it is and I'll tell you where it is tomorrow. For today I want you to do them by hand um, and it involves this number right here, which is how many contestants there are, goes on top as a factorial. And then these are the two numbers that are here and here being subtracted from each other. And this is this is not the contestants, it's the number of prizes there are, I guess, or places. And those two numbers together get put in over here as 3 minus 2. Well, what is 3 minus 2? 1, so it's really 1 factorial, which is just 1. So the bottom is just one. Is it always just one? No. Let's do one together and see if you understand what I'm talking about here. Actually, let's add a page. Um, say I had 6P3. Now, what does that mean? It means there were six what's contestants, and there are three what's possible places or prizes. or Okay? And... Instead of listing the names and everything, I just want you to compute this using the way I just showed you. So what's on top? Six factorial. What's on the bottom? Six minus three factorial. Which means six factorial over three factorial. And don't actually use a calculator to figure out the factorials. You can do this by canceling and stuff. This means 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All over 3 times 2 times 1. And this part, 3 times 2 times 1, cancels. And I bet you can do the rest in your head. What do you get? 6 times 5 is 30 times 4, 120. So then let's answer the question. If there were 6 contestants and 3 places... How many ways could they come in in those three places? 120. Okay, so if you have just six racers, you're up to 120 possible ways they could finish. All right? Let's do another one. All on your own this time. Let's say that there's um, um, eight racers this time. And let's go with three places again. That's pretty typical. First, second, third place. Now there's eight racers. No calcs. Mm. 
Yep. And what's 8 minus 3 factorial? 5 factorial. And did you see that a bunch of stuff's going to cancel? 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Over. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Cancels. Cancels. Can you do the rest in your head? 8 times 7? 56 times 6. Got it? 5 times 6 is 30. Oh, 6 times 6 is 36. 6 and 5 is 30 plus 3 is 33. 336. So there's 336 different ways they could come in. First, second, and third. That's a lot, isn't it? And can you imagine if it gets pretty crazy if you're doing the state meet and you're uh, you're going to like run 50 runners and they only have three places for a second, third? And it's an insane number of possible combinations. All right. Now, that's uh, permutations where order matters. Let's talk about it. Uh, actually, there's one more weird situation we should talk about, um, and that is where... You have like 3P3. Would you please use this little formula that we just learned? This is an example problem here. It's not a formula. It's just an example problem. And use it to solve 3P3 on your scratch paper. And then you tell me what weird situation comes up that we have to deal with. So you go 3P3, and you end up with 3 factorial over 3 minus 3 factorial, which is what? 0 factorial. So we better know what to do in that situation. Well, I can talk you through that with this little chart that one of my colleagues made up. If you have two items taken two at a time, then that means I want, like for instance, A and B. Then that could be either A, B, or B, A. Okay, and you got two different ways you can do that. If I had three items and I were going to like try to find out how many different sets of these three taken three at a time, then there would be six of them. Well, if I can sum it down to, if I had one item, it's pretty easy to tell. If I had one thing, one person competing, how many ways can they finish in the race? One, that, it's really obvious because that's saying one factorial is one. But when you get to a zero factorial, it's a little bit weird. It's like saying I had zero people competing in the race. How many ways can they come in? They can still come in only one way. Get the idea? If I had no people competing, there's only one way I could have an ant, a result. And that would be that nobody won the race. Okay, so that's another way to think through that zero factorial has to really be equal to, what do you think? One. And if that didn't work for your brain, um, then another way I could explain it to you would be that... Uh, if you look at an example, we know this one. This is that 3 with 3, where you have 3 people like Bob, Jim, and LaFonda, and then you make the sets, and we ended up, we have an answer, right? It is possible. In fact, we came out with 6 for an answer. Well, how can this be 6? If we don't know, even know what this is, I can figure out what it has to be if I know the answer is 6, because I did it. That has to be 1. Zero factorial has to be one. All right. And we it's not unprecedented in math. We sometimes have to make a definition like that. Do you remember doing things like this? Five to the zero power? What's that equal to? One. It's hard to picture in your head. But again, you can make a mathematical reasoning for it. But you, in the end, you just have to know it's a definition. That anything to the zero power is equal to one. Well, anything with zero factorial, it's also equal to one. Okay, so don't, when you get some on your homework that have zero factorial, don't freak out.